something recently snapped in me, and I gained a new rather unusual hobby, re-watching old anime that I once loved. I do it because my tastes have changed over the years, and I want to see if they still live up to their former glories. I started to notice many of the glaring flaws in my once favorite anime, and my love for some others have been further reinforced. I noticed that Domestic Girlfriend is actually more than just a horny incest harem where the MC goes out with his much older teacher who also happens to be his stepsister. Wow, it really sounds bad on paper, but I promise you, it's good. I noticed that I really didn't like some others, such as Classroom of the Elite. I mean, I made a whole 30 minute video about it. Check it out if you're interested. But the newest victim of this is the fan favorite Toradora. What could possibly be bad about this? It has a good Doki Doki Will They Won't They BS of any great romance with fun characters in Inko-chan and we can't forget. It has a Tsundere. It has to be good, right? Well, in a way, yes. I still think that it does its comedy well and it has fun character dynamics and relations, but I saw some very big flaws that I just could not ignore. Today, I will be asking a question no sane man has ever dared to ask. Is Toradora actually a good show? And before all the diehard fans get mad at me, just know that I was once like you. I too remember thinking that the show was flawless, but when I actually looked at it again objectively, I just noticed so many more flaws. Finally, if you start to understand where I'm coming from after the video, or you just enjoyed the content, subscribe and drop a like, it really helps out a lot. For those of you who don't already know, Toradora is a slice of life rom-com about our two protagonists, Ryuji and Taiga. Ryuji is a very caring, gentle giant. However, his above average physical stature and RDF, his resting delinquent face, shrouds his true nature. This fact has made him somewhat timid and insecure about himself, which prevents him from talking to his crush, Minori. Taiga's traits are almost the exact opposite, short-tempered, tsundere, short, but secretly bears a shy and insecure side that comes out in front of her crush, Kitamura. One day, our hero and heroine bump into each other and have a little misunderstanding. Taiga accidentally puts a love letter meant for Kitamura inside Ryuji's bag. Since she lives in the apartment just next door, she is able to sneak through his window in the middle of the night to try and kill him with the kendo stick. They clear the misunderstanding, and when the attempted murder is forgiven, they become close. She comes over to eat every night, calls him a dog, treats him like a dog, and he just has to obey, like any good friendship. They then devise a plan to help each other both be with the person they are crushing on. You see, the two happen to be best friends with each other's crushes. This is a fun little story about Ryuji and Taiga supporting each other through their crushes and how they eventually come to love each other. Before I get into the pros and cons, I just wanted to say an interesting piece of trivia that you may not have known. Non-native Japanese speakers like myself probably have no idea why the show is called Toradora, but as I studied Japanese and learned more words, I was able to piece it together. It is just a little wordplay on the main character's names. Taiga was often referred by her peers as Tenori Taiga, which literally translates to tiger that is riding your hand. And while she's not literally riding anyone's hand, it represents the small size and fierce nature of a tiger. But her name also being Taiga just makes the perfect double entendre. Her depiction as a tiger is a Tora part of the name, with Tora being Japanese for tiger. Something similar happens with Ryuji's name. The Ryu in Ryuji means dragon, Another way you could say dragon is Toragon, hence the Dora. The two animals, the dragon and tiger, are also significant figures in Japanese mythology. They represent opposite but harmonious forces, like the yin and yang, or like Ryuji and Taiga. This might have been obvious for many people, but it's just something I found interesting. Well, let's get to business and talk about the actual show now. And in a character-driven rom-com like this one, there are just few things that are important. Those things being characters and how likable they are, their relationships with one another, the comedy, and finally, romance and romantic chemistry. The show exceeds in some of these categories and just fails miserably in others. So first, let's talk characters. The characters in the show are fairly likable. I enjoyed Ryuji's genuine kindness and how it often goes wrong due to him being a clumsy little boy. I enjoyed Minori and how we come to slowly find out that she was just a weirdo. I enjoyed what little bit of Kitomura we saw, though I feel the show doesn't do him justice. I enjoyed Ami and how she is a self-aware bitch who lacks a filter. I enjoyed Ryuji's mom and all her funny moments. My favorite bit in the entire show is that from her. I enjoyed Inko, but seriously, what the hell is wrong with him? Okay, fine. You caught me. I'm beating around the bush. I didn't enjoy Taiga as a character. She's just a run-of-the-mill tsundere, and yeah, that's all I have to say about her. You might be thinking, 
but 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 she's cute. And to that, I say, I guess. Even that though, I'm not too sure about. It's uncanny and uncomfortable to me just how small she is. But hey, I have a Chihuahua who I think is adorable. Look at him. Look at Gary. But other than that, there's nothing for me to say about her that is positive. The vast majority of her bits follow this basic formula. Ryuji, nani shiten no yo, kono baka yaro ga. Eh, ki 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 kitamura kun? Naze kitamura kun ga koko ni? And let me tell you, it was never funny. Luckily, she has a rest of the cast to fill for her where she falls short, no pun intended. But the thing is, she is decently enjoyable around the rest of the characters. Is she a selfish, insufferable person who resorts to violence and crude language as a primary way of expressing her emotions, which are all qualities of an unlikable asshole? Well, yes, but something about her just works in the setting of the show. Really, by herself, she is a miserable character who I see no joy in watching. She is abusive because abuse is funny, she is terribly mean to her main boy, she is clumsy, rude, and so many other things. But somehow, maybe due to the dichotomy of character traits between her and Ryuji, maybe due to her being small and small equals cute, look at Gary. She works out fairly well. The rest of the cast is really good. I mean, they were able to make a tune that has seemed decent. Ryuji, the person closest to Taiga, has some genuinely desirable qualities. His selfless caring nature, while always trying his best to accomplish things, just makes you want to root for him. Not to mention, he's great with household appliances. Who doesn't love a guy who can clean out pipes with a takase stick, if you know what I mean? Minori, his original love interest, is just a delightful cinnamon bun. But if you fill the already sweet cinnamon bun with even sweeter chocolate, some panira sorito, and an orange or two, she's quirky, good at the things she does, silly, but doesn't exactly fit the manic pixie dream girl trope. She's just a dera dera genki girl who is a genuine weirdo, but not a weird kind of weirdo. I just mean she does things like this. <laughs> We see more depth from her as we go on in scenes like the one where she's locked in the shed. We learn that she's a very powerful girl who wears a strong face even in a scary situation. Kitamura, though we see very little of him, is cool in his own right. Smart, charismatic, and supportive, he is a good supporting character. From what little we have seen from him, I enjoyed him. This isn't to say that they don't have their fair share of flaws. Both Minori and Kitamura have some flaws, both as characters, and more about what the story does with them, but I'll get into that later. Next, we have Ami. The story first shows her to be a perfect, almost too perfect model, who is tall, nice, pretty, cute, pretty, and very perfect. But we quickly learn that she is the exact opposite on the inside. She is actually a sick, twisted, demented, and ruthless biatch through and through. But this doesn't bother me too much because she as well as the anime itself are both very aware that this is her character. I think that is the main difference between why I could stand Ami, but not Taiga. Everyone knows how Ami is, and due to the self-awareness they have, they can go all in with the jokes and play her out as, you know, a bitch. Taiga, however, we are supposed to like. The story presents her in a way where we think we are supposed to like her. The thing is, she's just as bad, if not worse than Ami, but there's no self-awareness at all. Finally, we have two of my favorite characters, the house duo. Yasuko and Inko. Yasuko is Ryuji's single mom. She comes home drunk every night and we can safely assume that she is a hostess or something of that nature. She is just the best. She gives good advice to Ryuji when he needs it the most, but is also kind of helpless on her own due to her carefree childish personality and clumsiness. Need I mention the best scene in the whole show again? <gasps> <laughs> We have Inko. Yup, that is Inko. An absolute abomination who I genuinely don't know what is up with. Inko-chan doesn't play a big part in the show, but it's just kind of there and it's hilarious every time. While the characters themselves are good, each of their traits shines so much brighter when they interact with one another. They all have great chemistry with each of their personalities blending perfectly. The characters have moments when they all seem to be in perfect sync with each other, but also are different enough to add a little bit of dynamic. 
Even the side characters have great moments that don't just feel like simple, unimportant side character filler. The side characters are all great for the most part, but one problem is consistent throughout all of them. They really are just side characters. The show treats them all like side characters A, B, and C, and this especially hurts because as I said earlier, they have really good moments, but the show gives us those moments and just forgets about them. The show shouldn't be one where we have two main characters we see too much of, it should have a main crew that we see equally of. And if they really showed us more of Minoru and Kitamura, one, the scenes with Taiga and Ryuji will seem even more special, and two, we wouldn't have episodes like the Kitamura arc. Those episodes really felt like, oh shoot, we forgot about Kitamura this whole time. Okay, just cram everything about Kitamura into these episodes. That not only messes up the pacing for the rest of the show, which it really could have used better of, especially the end, it also makes the Kitamura episode feel awkward and doesn't leave as big of an impact. The Kitamura arc also made one other flaw very clear to me. No one talks with each other. Every single problem throughout the entire show could be solved by having a simple conversation. The first problem, Taiga putting the letter in the wrong bag, could have been solved with a simple, hey, I put something in your bag that I didn't mean to, mind if I grab it? Instead, she breaks into his house with a kendo stick, damages his property, and attempts a murder. Even the whole thing of Taiga liking Kitamura but is too scared to talk to him could be solved if she just talked to Minori. Hey Minori, I like Kitamura, but I am too nervous to talk to him. Can you help me out? Why sure, Taiga, I will help you like a friend would. And thank you for telling me who you have a crush on like a friend would. Problem solved! The Kitamura episode was a final nail to the coffin. Kitamura was having a hard time because his crush in the student council was going abroad to study the next year. Therefore, even though he is the obvious candidate for the next student council president, he doesn't want to run for it and dyes his hair blonde so that he can't. Instead of being just a good friend and asking, Hey man, you were being weird, are you okay? What is going on? I am your friend and I care about you, so please talk to me and maybe I can help. They instead choose to run for presidency themselves and threaten to ruin the school as a student council president unless Kitomura himself runs. And then they have him come over, play video games all night, and hold him down to change his hair back. What the fuck? Now, I know that there needs to be some sort of conflict to make a story, but making the characters not communicate is the laziest and most annoying way to do it. There were too many times during the show where I literally yelled at the screen to just talk to each other. Instead of what they did, they could have, I don't know, showed us the challenges of adolescence and shifting into adulthood while not quite being there, which could lead them to misjudge situations and make bad decisions. They could show us the challenges of miscommunication and not the lack of communication to indirectly show the viewers and characters the importance of communication in relationships because, you know, humans can't read minds. The possibilities are endless. Even if they were to take the route they did, there are better ways to do it. For example, Kaguya-sama love is war. The whole premise of the show lies on the fact that Kaguya and the president don't want to talk to each other, but they make it work due to self-awareness. Everyone, from the viewers, Chika, even the narrator, knows that this is the main conflict of the show. Because of that self-awareness, they could parody it, making for a good drama and comedy. What Kitomura does next isn't much better. He gives in and runs for president. But during his speech, he confesses in public to the current student council president whom he has a crush on. Understandably, she dismisses it as it is objectively inappropriate in that current situation. This bugs Taiga. Really bugs her. In a blind rage, she later calls out the president and fights her with a kendo stick, which again, what the fuck? And after this episode, wow, I guess they really are done with Kitamura. He doesn't even show up in the title screen of the new opening in the next episode. I also have to mention that it feels like everyone is losing their personalities as the show goes on. Taiga was a spunky tsundere in the first 10 episodes, but then turns into a damsel in distress type character. Kitamura and Minori also turn into helpless damsel in distress characters. Hell, even Ami starts to lose her character. She starts becoming less of the iconic bad girl that she is and more into a mysterious character who only likes to speak in riddles. The school festival thing with Taiga's dad abandoning her is the first instance of her changing character. First of all, even this could have been solved if Taiga just talked to Ryuji about it, but that's besides the point I'm making here. Her dad abandoning her just leaves her helpless and lonely on the stage, now just waiting for a white knight, or maybe an Italian plumber dressed in a jumpsuit and red hat, or a Kirito maybe. 
She waits for her savior and sure does the savior come. And everyone clapped. No, literally, that was Regis' way of saving her. Starting a very corny cliche slow clap that progressively gets faster. I had to sit through it, so you do too now. Now, we are nearing the end, but we need a little break. Maybe even a holiday. Well, now we are in the Christmas arc. Ah, Christmas. A nice time of year filled with festivity and happiness. Good movies, food, family, random 180s in everyone's characters, random new side characters being added, terribly done drama, broken hearts, lack of communication. What else could you want? But really, was this a mess? Up until now, we've had an arc where Kitamura was a did, and one where Taiga was a did. And yes, I'll stop calling it that now. But the Christmas arc does something special. What if we didn't just have one damsel in distress? The bigger the number, the better, right? The Christmas arc ultimately leaves both Minori and Taiga as a damsel in distress. Taiga does a complete 180 in personality during the Christmas because Christmas makes her happy and a good girl. I mean, okay, I guess? Minori makes a terrible mistake and throws her softball game and is very sad about it. She is so sad that she won't even go to the Christmas party at school. To top it all off, she breaks one of Taiga's prized Christmas decorations when they are helping with setting up the party. She is now a sad girl and won't go to the party even if Ryuji invites her. Also, they really haven't even attempted to talk to her about this clear problem. Anyways, the party happens and Taiga and Ami do a little concert for the people there and then Taiga disappears right after. Her reasoning for leaving is to go see Santa. And when she realizes that Santa isn't coming, she feels lonely and says how she will be lonely again this year. Are we really just gonna forget the fact that she wasn't alone? She was with Ryuji at the party. She isolated herself on purpose. It seems they did this really just to add another damsel in distress. And you won't guess who saves the day. Ryuji comes through her window in a Santa costume and makes her feel happy. Just a little side note, but did she really believe in Santa at the age of 17 and was sad that he didn't come? I knew she was childish, but this takes that to a whole other level. Well, after a touching moment with Taiga, she lets him know that she convinced Minori to go to the party and that she would be waiting there. Then Taiga cries after he leaves about the fact that Ryuji will likely be with Minori. Minori sees Taiga crying while calling Ryuji's name on her way to the party, so she basically just shoots Ryuji down with the reason of her thinking that Taiga likes Ryuji as well. Again! If she just talked to her so-called best friend. But this is Toradora we're talking about here. I have a more personal bone to pick with this next part. I just really hate when shows do this thing where characters get rejected because they find out that another girl also likes a guy so they are backing off. It never really made me feel emotional or bad, but just kind of frustrated. I strongly believe that the male character also should have a say in this. What if Ryuji doesn't actually like Taiga? Then Minori rejected him for nothing and it's not like they talk so Minori really has no way of knowing. There's no reason for one to suffer for the happiness of another character. The show doesn't have to take the damsel in distress thing further by making Minori the tragic hero that lost her love for the happiness of her best friend. If they simply just made it so that she didn't like him romantically or already had a boyfriend or something, it would have felt way more realistic and emotional. Then everyone could be happy. And all of the criticism I just gave about the show wasn't because they didn't know what they were doing. The people making it actively made the characters like that, because cute, touching emotional moments like this still exist. Them being able to talk normally like this without any nervous protagonist BS truly feels refreshing. We take that cool refreshing feeling and take it literally to somewhere cool. Cold even. Because a cast is now going to a ski resort as a class trip. And to be completely honest, I forgot that this arc even existed. So before even going into it, it's probably not that important. The trip starts with a little childish argument between two of the side characters, who are so side characters that I don't even know their names. Yup, that goes nowhere. Then we have the boys going into the girls room for something and then having to hide because no one was there trope. 
And during the time the boys are hiding, the girls come back in and start having an argument. And Jesus, what the fuck is wrong with Ami? She was already, you know, but I mean that was her character. But she had some moments that were cool. But they just take every good aspect away and amplify her shitty ones until she is just insufferable. She just berates Minori for rejecting Ryuji, which she had the right to do, and just says some really messed up things. And thinking back on it, this wasn't the only time she has turned like this. Ever since the Christmas arc, she never says things straight and just says things in a mysterious roundabout way. Like what in the classroom of the elite could this mean? <laughs> And this is the absolute pinnacle of bitch. No context out of nowhere. These are all very interesting choices they make. The next day, when Ami is talking to Ryuji, Minori and Taiga accidentally crash into her on a sled. Ami takes this personally and just starts saying things that go way too far. Reasonably, Minori gets mad and starts confronting her about it. Then things get physical. <laughs> During that sick fight scene, Minori loses something valuable to her and Taiga goes out to search for it. Taiga gets lost and then found by Ryuji, like a damsel in distress. Anyways, Ryuji picks up the unconscious Taiga and takes her back and Taiga mistakes him for being Kitamura so she confesses to him that she likes Ryuji. That's really the only thing that matters in that episode. The next episode, the students need to fill out a career plan for school and this episode was really touching. We found out a little more about Yasuko's nature and it really shows that she is just one of the best anime moms out there. And Taiga also comes back home from being away for a bit, and what Ryuji says here just feels right. I honestly miss Taiga and Ryuji being together. This moment between them feels special due to the past few episodes being filled with everyone but those two. And I think that this is a bright silver lining in this a couple of cuckoos of a show. And they could have taken this and applied it to the show when it wasn't an absolute shit show. Show us more of the other characters so that the moments with the main characters feel more special. And I don't know if it really is just a scarcity changing my opinion, but Taiga is really starting to grow on me here. She lost most of her sundereness and is cute, still spunky, and has some really cool moments. It was a weird decision to change her personality in the second half of the show and it's still awkward, don't get me wrong, but this version of Taiga is growing on me very quickly. If they only started her like this, I think I would have liked it. It really bugs me that they always get one aspect wrong. In the first half, the plot and most characters were great, but we just saw too much of the one person that wasn't, Taiga. In the second half, the plot is an absolute shit show, the characters are going downhill, but we see less of Taiga and what we see of her is pretty decent. If they just... <sighs> We see Taiga's caring side when Yasuko becomes sick and Ryuji is having a hard time because of it. And because Yasuko is sick, she can't work. Taiga and Ryuji take her job for the day and take some of the leftover chocolate they are selling for Valentine's Day. As an apology for causing trouble during the class trip, Taiga calls Ami, Minori, Kitamura, and Ryuji to a room to give them chocolate. She gives Kitamura the best one because she thinks that he carried her up the mountain, but Minori knows that it was actually Ryuji and knows that Taiga confessed her feelings during that time. She gets mad at Ryuji for knowing that she confessed but not acknowledging what happened by giving the credit to Kitamura. Minori tells her what really happened that night and then Taiga just runs off, forcing them to chase her. But there are some problems with this too. Why would Minori do that? The only reasonable explanation for her telling Taiga what happened is for plot reasons. I get that Taiga confessed and it is kind of serious, but she doesn't want to talk about it. Not to mention, she fucking ran away. If someone runs away, it is probably because they don't want to talk about it. You shouldn't chase her. Just give her some time, man. Everyone has some sensitive topics they don't like to talk about. You shouldn't just force them to talk about it like that. Then Minori confesses to Ryuji and also says how it was wrong of her before to reject Ryuji based on how she thought Taiga felt. And guess what? She basically does it again. She says that she should be with Taiga because they love each other instead of her. 
Everything is going not the worst. The plot seemed like it was starting to close with the clear direction it wanted to go. Taiga's change was cool, Ryuji was always decent, Minori had a really touching moment at the end, but things are going too well, and they need to be ruined. Yasuko finds out that Ryuji took on the job in her stead, but Ryuji promised that he would focus on studying and not get a job. Yasuko is understandably mad at him for hiding it from her and breaking their promise. Then Ryuji says some unforgivable things that makes her precious Yachan cry. That f***ing <laughs> actual f***ing <clears throat> Sorry for my language, let's get back to being professionals. And you know that the show will turn for the worse if Yasuko cries. Oh yeah, Taiga's mom was also there, but that's the first time we've ever seen her so I don't really care about her, nor does she really matter. Anyways, the two run away from their parents and are planning on eloping. Then, they jump off a bridge, which was a little random to say the least, but alright. It represents a drastic action, I guess. And when they're about to confess to each other, the rom-com trope that I hate the most happens. The devilish, love-breaking phone call. The mood is ruined to say the perfect I love you, but what does happen is that Kitamura tells them to go to Ami's house to hide for a bit. The crew all meet up, and they all give Ryuji and Taiga something to help them with their plan. Minori knows that what they are doing is wrong, and says that she can't support them, but says that if that is the way they want to do things, she won't object. Right after saying that, she gives them all of her savings from countless hours of work that was supposed to be used for her going to a good college with a good athletics program which was stated just one episode prior. Also, she seems pretty damn supportive of them if she's willing to give them money for it. Well, they run away to Ryuji's grandparents house and then things settle down really fast. The pacing for these last few episodes are just wild. It goes from 0 to 100 in no time and back to 0 just as fast. It kinda does what Domestic Girlfriend did with this ending, which let me know if I should do a video on it, where it just goes too fast. They both have symptoms of what I in the non-medical and strictly one-man community like to call, wait, what episode are we on? Oh, Classroom of the Elite, we need to end it quickly, just shove everything in there now, syndrome. Then they go back and everything resolves. I'll end the analysis there just as fast as the show ended to drive home the point. So the final verdict, how do I feel about the show? Well, to be completely honest, I still am not too sure. It had really high highs, but also really low lows. Each character had a very unique personality with each of them feeling like they could be a protagonist of their own, except for Taiga. But even that could be a compliment to everything else. If the character dynamics and chemistry were good enough to the point that Taiga, a regular tsundere, looked like a good character, that really says a lot about the rest of the cast. However, I think the worst part that could possibly ruin it for me was the ending. It seemed like they were really confused on what they were trying to tell and as a result, it seemed very hesitant and weak and overall terrible. If they ended strong, or even just not weak, I truly believe that this could be an anime of all time, but the whole second half brings it from a strong 8 to 9 out of 10 to maybe a 6 if I am being generous. Don't get me wrong, I still enjoyed it for the most part so don't come crying to me in the comments, but there were just some things that were just too hard to look past to make it a perfect show. The second half specifically was filled with some batshit insane decisions. From the show forgetting when to end or what to do, to all of the characters turning into something different for better or worse, from the quick zeros to hundreds, and to the just as sudden hundred to zeros, this show had some serious problems. So the final verdict is that I think I like the show, but with some huge issues that make it just barely good. The highs were so high that even with the very low lows, it still averages out to me just barely liking the show. If there's an anime you would like me to check out next, just let me know in the comments and I will take a look. My name is Noah Bokoa, and to everyone, tigers, dragons, bakachis, birds, or even little tsunderes, thank you for watching. But one question was left unanswered even after the end. What the f*** is wrong with that bird?